Hello everyone, uh, my name is Solomon and I'm the 90 rank point scorer from YIJC for 2022 A-levels. So I'm making this video to share my knowledge and pass on my own tips and tricks to help future batches. Those that are from other JCs or those who take uh, GCSE A-levels or other high-level exams can probably still glean valuable information from what I have to say. So please pay attention okay, if this applies to you. So a quick backstory, I was actually quite a shitty student in secondary school. Uh, I was in double science, I took physics and chemistry. Uh, I was at the bottom of the class, uh, just sleeping through all the lessons, you know, just overall like the, the perfect example of what a student shouldn't be, basically. I almost retained in secondary three, but luckily in the end, I woke up, kind of, and I managed to bring my score low enough to an L1 R5 of 19 raw, which allowed me to go to JC, just, just barely allowed me to go to JC. But in the end, I ended up doing well throughout JC, and I attained 90 rank points in the A-levels, right? Even though I was from YIJC, you know, some people think uh, YI is a low-tier JC. You know, there's a, there's a lot of stigma around YIJC, but, you know, you can still succeed. So, I'm going to be sharing how I did it. I'll mention exactly what I did. And also what I think all of you should do if you want to score, you know, maximum RP in YJC, in, in JC, sorry. Uh, in the end, actually, you choose your own path. So you got to decide if you want to work hard or not, because this doesn't, this doesn't come, you know, easy. You don't just, you don't just, uh, you can't just breeze your way through, you know, you actually have to put in effort. So first of all, I'm not actually anything special. I didn't pay to win with tuition or attend gifted education programs or anything like that, right? Um, I didn't go for any special programs or whatever. I'm literally just the standard student, the same as you watching the video. Uh, I took PCME with three H2s and Econ's H1. So don't don't have the limiting mindset. Don't think that. You can you can't score ninety rank points. You, you don't think that you can't do well in the A levels, just because you're not like good already. That's not how it works. Like you don't need academic leverage in the first place to score well in the A levels. Cause I was like I was so shit. Like I was such a bad student, and I still managed to score well in the A levels, right? So don't put limiting beliefs on yourself. You have to actually believe that you can do it first, right? Anyone can do it so long as you work hard and you put your mind to it. But you also got to employ smart studying tactics, right? This is what your teachers are going to say. And yeah, they're not capping. It's <clears throat> it's true. You just have to set your mind to it, right? And you can do it, honestly. No matter where you're from, no matter which JC you're from, whatever, whatever your background is, right? <laughs> okay, so as some of you, most of you probably already know, the A-levels are evolving, becoming more challenging, right? Because students are getting too good since you could literally just mug like, you just mug and mug every single day, and the A levels would just be a breeze, it'd just be like another practice paper or some shit. But over the past few years, Cambridge has been making the questions more and more uh, dynamic, and uh, they're throwing out weird ass questions that people haven't seen before. So, like, you could, you could mug every day, and then you'd still see a question that you've never seen before in the A level paper, right? So, you can't just spam practice papers and then hope to do like amazing in A levels, right? Because now it tests more of your understanding and ability to solve questions that you've never come across before. So for this, right, you can't just uh, copy paste answer schemes, stuff like that. You need to actually understand what the question is asking, understand the concepts and all that, and then apply them respectively, apply them uh, wherever you need to. So to do this, to do well, you need to unlock a deeper understanding of each topic and each subject. So for now, I'm going to be sharing five main things that I did in my JC uh, career to achieve this, right? So first of all, in JC, I'm pretty sure you, you're going to have e-learning, or at least in YIJC, we had e-learning. Uh, it's called SLS, you know, Student Learning Space. So a common mistake, right, that most people make is just rushing through your SLS for the sake of reaching deadlines, right? So that the teacher won't scold them or some shit like that. That, that is a big mistake. You're, you shouldn't be doing that. One thing I always made sure to do is complete my e-learning uh, properly, right? The ones that I did do, I did them properly. I did them slowly. And I made sure to do like pretty much almost all my homework 
just that I was late for like all of them but but I did it properly I submitted it late some of my e-learning late my homework late whatever but I did it properly and you know I made sure I understood what I was doing instead of just copying answers or just like clicking through the slides or some shit like that you know just clicking through the video clicking to the end and then just spamming the next button that's just a waste of your time straight up you're just gonna sit there for like 10 minutes and then go through a I don't know, one and a half hour lecture and then you're just gonna absorb absolutely nothing right don't do that even if it takes you like three hours or something you have to actually sit there understand what they're saying and then replay and then if you really cannot understand you should just go and ask your teacher right just like highlight it in the lecture notes or something and go and ask your teacher and the, the teacher will be more than glad to help you usually right so Tip number one would be to do your SLS properly, don't just rush it. Take your time to understand it. And, you know, if you're doing this, most likely you're going to need more time than usual. So you should ask your teacher for time extensions. And don't do it at the last minute, obviously. Do it, like, before. And maybe you should do it on the day itself. Though this depends on your teacher's personality and whether or not you're ready to be scolded for not doing on time. Because I also got scolded at the start. I got scolded a lot for not submitting on time and all that. But for me, you know, this is how I did it and it worked, right? I didn't rush through anything. I made sure to take my time and understand everything. So yeah, make sure you complete every single piece of homework that is, that is assigned because teachers assign them for a reason. They don't just give you homework for no reason, especially in JC. They assign you, like, actual relevant stuff, so do it as much as you can. If you don't know how to do it, do it with your friends. Even if you do it late, just try to submit as soon as possible, okay? And another thing, if you didn't do your homework and you have to submit it or something, Try not to copy people's shit and just submit it. doesn't help at all. If you can, just come clean and tell your teacher why you couldn't do it. And then try to do it on your own, you know. They'll, they'll, you can ask them for an extension. Maybe you have to stay back or something. Just just do it. Uh, if you really can't make it, I guess you could copy. But once you get your like assignment or whatever back, make sure you fully understand every step your friend did. And ask him or her how you know they did their stuff how the method works if you don't understand because otherwise you're just wasting your time again you're just copy pasting it doesn't help at all you're just wasting your time uh for graded assignments by the way uh those are the ones you should actually try to do on time because it affects your grade other like small homework like you know not small but like non-weighted homework you could you know try to take your time i guess but uh, yeah the most priority you should place is on your graded assignments obviously so if you don't know any questions, obviously, in a tutorial, you should just skip it first and then try to do it together with your friends, like the next day when you come to school or something. Or you can send a picture of it to your group chat and then, you know, ask your friends how to do it. Or you can wait for the teacher to go through and then try to attempt it by yourself while you have the answer at hand, right? So you got a tutorial there and then the teacher will go through it and then she'll, he or she will upload, upload the answer key online. So then you could try to do it while referring to the answer key, right? When I say refer, um, you, you don't just copy the solution and then be like, ah, so that's how it works. Like, th understanding the answer key in the moment that you see it and actually understanding the method they use and why they use it are entirely different things, right? Another common mistake, people think that they understand the topic because they can understand what the answer key is doing. And then they just copy, paste, copy, paste. And then when the real exam comes, they're, they're like panicking. They have no idea what to do. Yeah, because all, all you did was look at what the answer you know, was. You didn't understand why it was like that. You didn't understand why they did that method and all that. So one tip for this is try to do the question on your own first. See how far you get. And then open up the answer key and refer to just the next step, right? The next keyword or the next step. Just the next one only. And then you take that and you try to move on from there. Right? Don't just wholesale copy the entire thing. There's no point. Okay? The second tip, this is especially useful during exam time, is to use trackers to watch how you spend your time. So if you use your computer a lot, you can use Chrome extensions to monitor how much time you spend on actual learning sites like Google Drive, Google Classroom, SLS, etc. and how much time you waste on YouTube and other like random shit. So for your phone, you should already have a pre-installed tracker. If you don't have one, just go and install it, it's not that hard. And it helps a lot, by the way. Like, you can see how much time you're spending. It's, it's, it's very useful. Like, you'll, like, if you're using TikTok or some shit, right? You can, hours can just go by. You have no idea. But if you have your tracker, you can know how much time you're wasting every day. And this will, like, it'll make you more conscious, basically. It'll make you more conscious. And then, you know, you'll be less likely to actually go and continue doing the bad behavior. 
Right, so one app I use heavily right around the prelim period is Yolpumta, okay, also known as YPT, Y-E-O-L-P-U-M-T-A, right, it's a study logger. I use it every time I studied to see whether or not I studied well for the day, because I don't study like 10 hours in one shot. Instead, it's like you study a bit, you know, you do a bit and then your brain's fried, then you relax, then you study a bit, relax, then you just continue that until I'm done for the day. Uh, for the record, around the prelim and A-level time, just, just for reference, right, my average clocking time, my average study time uh, in July was around three and a half hours. August, September, October, November is around four and a half to five and a half hours, yeah. So, it, it's not realistic to try to hit 10 hours every day, it's, it's not realistic. I think if you're hitting at least four hours every day, and the four hours is not, like, like, the four hours is actual study time, I think that's actually good. But, you have to have, like, you have to have some level of knowledge and understanding and adeptness uh, at the topic already, at the subject, in the subject already, right? So if you're just, like, scoring you all the way, and you study four hours a day, it's not gonna work. I don't think it's gonna work. You have to at least be like around passing grade or something like that, like I don't know, E or D, and then you can I guess you could get away with four hours a day. So yeah, there's that. That's the second tip. The third tip is pretty much what I did for the whole JC period, right? Is once they announce the exam dates, which is usually about one month or so before the exams begin, I start studying for the exams by preparing a list of topical. So Basically, they give you the exam scope, right? Then there's like all the topics listed from one to whatever. So I just take a notebook, and you write, you write the, the you write the subject on top. You write all the topics, and then yeah, I just write all the topics, and I just do each topic one by one until I'm done. And then each time I do one topic, I cross it out. You know, I cross it out, and then, uh, okay. So what I mean by do a topic in J one, when I say do a topic, I mean basically uh, redo the tutorial. Or if you don't want to do that, you can do the supplementary questions that, you know, for YIJC we have supplementary questions at the back. So you could do that. And I guess for J1 that should be sufficient for most of J1. Just redo the supplementary and then uh, whatever practice questions the teacher gives them, go and do them, right? So that's how it works for topical. Once you're in J2, doing topical would mean like doing your topical TYS or your topical revision packages, right? Uh, these ones you should be doing around mid-year prelim A level around there. You should already be doing uh you should already have started your topical TOIS and all that shit. Okay? By the time your prelims roll around, you should like be starting practice papers. If you can. If you cannot then you'll have to sort of sacrifice your prelim results. But yeah okay you need to you need to finish your topical around prelim time at least. Like that's the most you can go. You cannot be doing topical like right before A-levels, you, you cannot be doing that. You need to be doing practice papers when A-levels is about, you know, right around the corner. So, uh, for the exams that are in J1, J2, if I have time left after completing all the topical, I will move on to practice papers and I'll just do as many as I can um, before the exam starts. So, I think a good number of practice papers to do for each topic to score like an A would be maybe at least three. Should do at least three practice papers to score an A, in my opinion, right? Three, three to five. Although five is a bit excessive, but yeah, three to five should be fine if you did the topical properly. Right. So, yeah, that's how it works. The thing is, the problem with this method, right, is that the more you progress in J1 and J2, the less, the less viable it gets and the more stressful it gets. Why? Because the scope of the exam becomes insanely huge, like, the exams can range from, like, 10 to 15 topics, and you have literally 5 subjects to study for. So you can have, like, I don't know, like, 60 topics or some shit, right? That's, like, that's crazy, you can't do that shit for prelim. So I was able to use this method to keep my grades improving all the way to MYE, mid-year exam. But, you know, for prelims it was too much, it, it's literally the entire scope like it's literally the whole syllabus right so i couldn't i couldn't finish my topics by prelim so my rp had like a increasing trend all the way until my and then it dropped for prelim because of this because i couldn't finish so in a sense i sacrificed my prelims results for my a level results 
Um, because I couldn't finish by the time prelims were done, but then by the time pre hey, sorry, by the time prelims began, but by the time prelims were finished, I finished my topical. And then for A levels, I had like I'd say enough time to do practice papers and stuff. Though I was struggling for my H ones, to be honest. Um, right. So this method is definitely a bit risky, actually quite risky, but. If you're the kind of person that isn't disciplined enough to set aside like two hours every day to study on top of doing your homework, basically if you're not disciplined enough to study consistently every day, then this is one method that you could potentially use, right? But the better way would just be to study every day, like two hours or something, on top of your homework, by the way. When I say study, I'm not talking about homework. Homework and studying are different things, right? So, <clears throat> tip number four. Pay attention to how exactly the methods work in all your topics, especially the sciences, where the formulae come from and shit like that, right? Especially in physics. It helps so much, it helps immensely if you actually understand how the equations come about. Why? Well, firstly, this helps you know when to actually use the equations, right? Because there are a lot of different scenarios in physics and then you have to use the right equations. Sometimes there'll be like overlapping stuff, especially in... Um, uh, is it like electromagnetism and stuff like that. There'll be like overlapping stuff. So you need to know which equation to use, when and why, etc. And secondly, understanding how the equations work and come about helps you remember the definitions so you don't have to just like memorize it because you actually understand the equation. Then you can, you know, you can just spit out the definition. For example, the F equals to BIL sine theta, right? Uh, they ask for magnetic flux density or something. You just rearrange the equation. Like, literally, the definition describes the equation. So, yeah. Um, also, if you understand the equation, you'll understand the derivation. And then it won't just be sen sentences of fancy words in a particular order, right? You'll actually understand what's going on. So you can write it more easily instead of just, like, blindly memorizing. Also, the definitions actually help you understand the concept. Um, I don't know how to explain this, but if you understand what the definition is trying to say, then you'll understand the concept better, right? So please go ahead and clarify the meanings with your teacher if you don't understand fully. And this is very important for physics especially, by the way. For maths, the best thing to do is to practice. But for me personally, I tried to understand how equations were derived, right? Like, I tried my best for most equations. Like, you, you try to see how it comes about and what the equation is, is all about, basically. And I kept asking my teacher to show me all the derivations, right? Like, Maclaurin series and uh, sigma notation, all that shit. I asked my teacher how those equations came about, and I tried to understand what he was doing and replicate what he was doing, just so I could get a deeper understanding of maths. So, honestly, this requires effort on your side, because you gotta actually go to the teacher and ask him or her to show you or show the class. Especially in lower tier JCs, because teachers just assume that students don't really care, which is like, for the most part, it's true. Like, a lot of students are, you know, they don't, a lot of students, you know, it's a common mistake to just memorize and not understand. So you actually, you actually have to go to the teacher and ask them to show you, or else they may not show you, right? So the last tip for this video is to teach your friends. This is extremely, extremely important. So... Some people may think that it's better not to teach anyone anything at all. Because after all, you know, if your friends don't know how it works, but you know, wouldn't it be better for you? Because they're going to drag the bell curve down. Okay, first of all, this is a very messed up way of thinking. And secondly, it's, it's not the best way to do things, right? You should teach each other. Why? When you can actually teach other people new concepts that you've learned, you unlock deeper level of understanding and you, and you unlock a bigger breadth of understanding as well. Why is that? Because, um, see, your friends may think of questions and, you know, they may challenge assumptions, right? They may think of things they may not think of and ask you why things work in certain ways. And this is going to challenge your own knowledge and understanding of the subject, right? And it'll lead you to think deeper because, you know, if you put all your minds together, you know, you're going to look at it from different ways, different perspectives, and you, you, you have to share with each other, you know? You have to share your own questions and then have answer each other's questions, right? Because this way you un unlock a wider range of understanding. And this will drive you to come to logical conclusions and explanations. Because sometimes you actually have to, you know, think by your, yourself 
how things work or why things work the way they do. And you know, if you don't understand, this is a perfect opportunity for you to go and ask your teacher, and then you'll unlock you know more new knowledge that your you know other people may not have just because they didn't bother. You know, so yeah, this is a very good method teaching your friends. This is me, me and my friends. You know, we really we we did a lot of work together. They they, they ask me how things work. I teach them. They teach me stuff like that, right? And it deepens both you and your friends' understandings of the subject matter. Teaching other people solidifies your understanding, and you know you're actually you know you're actually good at the topic when you can effectively explain it to someone who doesn't understand it, right? After all, the genius isn't one that can understand complex concepts. The real genius is he who can effectively explain those complex concepts in simpler terms, such that the layman can understand, right? This this tip is very 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 important. And it's, yeah, like I said, it's something I did a lot throughout JC. Whenever I, you know, help my friends, I, I listen to them, you know, they ask really good questions. Then I have to think, what is the answer to that question? Sometimes, you know, the questions they ask, the notes won't address them. Then you have to come to your own conclusions. And this challenges your understanding, right? Challenges your understanding, leads you to new conclusions that the notes may not have. Yeah. It made me think and seek deeper understanding, which is extremely important because, like I said, the A-levels are evolving becoming more challenging, more dynamic. So you need to understand better. Okay, so I want to keep this short, though it's already been 21 minutes. Um, I don't think it's going to give five tips. Uh, if people watch this video and there's positive reviews or whatever, like good if there's traction on this video, then I'll make uh, another video giving more tips. For now, I just gave five, five main ones, but I have other tips as well. I have more general tips. And I can tell you how each subject works, basically. Um, I can give you specific tips for each subject. So yeah, if this video gets good traction, I'll go ahead and upload that. If not, never mind. It's okay. I just hope that the people that watch this video gain some you know, understanding from this video, gain some knowledge. And hopefully this helps you in your A-levels. All the best to everyone. Thank you for watching.